what is up folks I ain't made a video in a while oh, it feels weird almost but anyway as you can tell from the title I think I know what I'm gonna name this we spent some stimulus money today we exchanged that stimulus money for probably already know from the thumbnail a Kawasaki W800 a lot of people probably don't know what the W800 is because I did not know what the W800 is not that I'm the be all end all knowing what everything is but I had no clue until I saw one that Kawasaki even made something like this I'd seen the W800 cafe uh, and then they make a standard which is like the cafe all blacked out kind of or partly blacked out and not as much chrome and then they make just the W800 which is supposed to resemble as close as possible to something from the 60s the W1 so anyway we've got an 800cc parallel twin that is air cooled and has a 360 degree firing order which kind of sounds weird and that's because it is I never knew they made such a thing but most parallel twins from back in the day I thought were 180 degree firing order one pistons up one pistons down and then the cycle just obviously is going to stay like that this is 360 meaning both pistons move up and down in tandem so if one pistons up the other pistons up but they fire opposite of each other and my phone is ringing and we're back sorry about that so anyway where was I at? oh yeah so engine has a 360 degree firing order if one piston is up then the other piston is also up they're just on opposite strokes so when one piston is going up on its exhaust stroke to push out hot gas the other one is going up on its compression stroke which means it probably you would think buzzes like a big single cylinder and that's probably true of the older bikes but this one has a counterbalance shaft on it so it's actually pretty dead smooth um, I wouldn't call it dead smooth maybe maybe that's a stretch but it's definitely very smooth uh, a little buzzy in the seat right around not even so much the bars you can kind of see it in the mirrors but down low uh, we'll say 2500 but you won't ever ride at that speed like it's got the torque to, to put around at super low RPM and so you can short shift the living piss out of it and it's about like a Harley or some other big V twin like it doesn't mind being short shifted it's got the torque to pull out of it but I, I just I don't find myself riding at those speeds and that's the speeds that I read online everyone or the RPM rather everyone said hey you know this thing vibrates bad I don't see it I mean, I mean if I short shift it and I'm doing 2500 RPMs yeah but in normal riding I, I'm not finding myself at that RPM almost ever taking off uh, and that's about it so uh, even just cruising back roads here I'm not doing any by any stretch of the imagination I'm not doing any uh, rambunctious riding and I'm occasionally drifting down to 2500 on the tack but it's it's not where the bike's happy it likes to be a little higher in the RPM than that in between three and four is where it's real real smooth and real happy and the bars kind of pick up a vibration right here at around 3500 but then when you blow past it to 4000 it just smooths right back out so anyway I digress uh, what else oh iconic engine design we have a what looks like a push rod on the outside of the right side of the engine not on the left but it's not a push rod this bike has a bevel gear drive camshaft so in the bottom end there's a ring gear that spins a pinion gear and then that in which turns a shaft which is what you see underneath the chrome cover on the right side of the engine that runs vertical up the side of the engine there's a shaft in there that spins and then there's another ring and pinion gear 
at the top to convert the direction of the, of the RPMs of that shaft 90 degrees and then turns the cam. So there is no, there's absolutely no, uh, it's a single overhead cam, there's no cam chain and while we're talking about the valve train, uh, it does use shim style valve adjusters but since it has one centered camshaft it has rocker arms so you don't have to take the camshaft out to do a valve adjustment you simply slide the rocker arm over reach in with a magnet pull your uh, shim out mock it replace it with a thinner thicker shim and the job is done no pulling the camshaft out so that's great you know if end up keeping it long enough to put a ton of miles on it won't have any issues doing my valve adjustment so good news there and beside that this is my first ride I've got uh, six miles since I filled up with gas and so I've got a couple miles to get from home to the gas station that I chose to go to so first ride impressions like I said spent that Biden stimulus money uh, I got two kids, so you do the math, a wife and two kids, you will know how much uh, I got back, and we invested that towards this W800. Why the W800, you may ask? I've kind of always wanted a Triumph. I think I, the infatuation with an old Triumph comes from uh, some of the old movies I watched growing up on any Sunday. You know, they were riding old Triumph style bikes um, you know showed Steve McQueen riding one around and I just like the way they look so I've always thought they were neat but when they brought the Bonneville back in the 2000s it, it wasn't the same Bonneville and it's been updated numerous times and I'm sure I haven't ridden one I'm sure it is a fantastic machine but that is irrelevant to the fact that it is nothing like the old Bonnie. And that's great. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be like iconic looking like the old Bonnie. And then that's all it's got in common with it. It's nothing else like it. Which is fine. And I was still looking at a Bonneville. I was like, I'm going to take this, uh, this bit of stimulus money. I'm going to get me like some retro looking bike. But I don't have to push it everywhere like a real retro bike. Because uh, I used to have a red CB354, 1972 model, in my teenage years. And I thought that was a pretty neat bike. And, I mean, true classic. And being a four-cylinder and a four-car bike, a pain in the butt. So, I was like, I'm going to get a classic-looking bike that's modern. Because, why not? I'm lazy. Nobody wants to deal with sinking four carbs and uh, yada, 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 yada. So... I was looking at Triumphs, and I was looking at Royal Enfield Interceptor 650s. And the only issue with the Interceptor is there's no, there's plenty of room for a passenger, it, it appears, on the seat. I've went and looked at them, but I didn't test ride one. I have a Royal Enfield dealer pretty close by. So I went and looked at them, didn't test ride one. But the only problem was the, because of the upswept exhaust, the passenger pegs were kind of high. And so it's not super comfortable for the wife. And, I mean, this isn't supposed to be some highway tour, but put a small backrest on it, and a passenger should be relatively comfortable. Uh, you know, it's more or less a bench seat, so the, the driver is blocking all the wind off the passenger. You give them a little backrest, it should be a comfortable bike. But on the infield, the, the passenger pegs were raised up super high and kind of in a crotch rocket style position where your heels are almost touching your thighs. I mean, not, I'm exaggerating, but it just didn't look super comfortable. Everything else about the bike seemed very appealing, price tag included. Um, I was able to get this bike as a 2020 model for, I'm out the door $700 cheaper out the door after taxes and everything $700 cheaper than the MSRP for this bike because it had some ridiculous $1,600 uh, $1,800 had an $1,800 rebate on it so 
anyway that's my first initial impressions and thoughts and kind of small crappy overview of the bike uh, once i put some miles on it we'll uh, we'll take another ride together and see how we're uh, liking it then how our thoughts have evolved but so far super happy with it i'll get you some off bike shots here get a good idea what this thing looks like bam here we go i'll probably take some with the uh the foam too they'll come out a little better beautiful bike on the left side but it's way more beautiful on the right come around to the right you have this gorgeous gorgeous engine amazing this looks like it rolled right out of 1970 got a center stand factory on this model so that's nice yeah it's very very aesthetically appealing in my opinion so yeah i'll uh, i'll throw in some pictures from the uh from the phone they'll come out a little better and we'll catch y'all next time